This is the view of the salt pans in the little run of Kutch in Gujarat, the western state of India. Well, we first went there to look at the wildlife, the birds and the wild ants. But there's something else we discovered about this place. Their families who live in their desert, they've been uh, hired as labourers and their job is to make salt out of the water that's been harvested in the monsoons. They live in appalling conditions. They work long hours in extreme heat. Families have little access to health care and child mortality is very high. They have very little access to fresh water even and fresh food and they can live there for up to nine months of the year. There's very little education and uh, I think sometimes they go to the local village school but if they go at all I think it's only one day a week. And they basically have nothing. Dan Raj Malik runs the safaris out into the desert and that's how we first met him. He's part of a local aristocratic family and in fact his grandfather was the last sultan of the area. He has really strong links with these people of the desert and he was very keen for us to come and run an art project with them. In fact, he said it would be the first one in two million years. So the whole idea to go to the uh, salt uh, pan children is that some uh, new exposure for them because they've never done painting or uh, acting ever in their life. Because they had lived such an isolated life and they hadn't been to school, I wasn't really that sure what they were capable of. And I wondered, because they have no access to, it, to television or film, whether they would understand some of the comedy. I wanted to bring some colour into that landscape because it's very grey and, and muted tones. We cut up some old bed sheets that Dan Wright had in his hotel and we had little strings attached to them so they could be made into flags and the children drew on them with uh, oil-based pastels. We created scenes in mime showing their cooking and their eating as well as some of the classical mime exercises. They really got it, they really understood it and enjoyed it. We did some basic clowning as well, which they laughed at, and that was the whole idea of the, the afternoon, was that they had a good time. A lot of the adults were at first on the periphery just watching what was going on and you could see that they were totally en engrossed by it and with a little bit of encouragement from us they joined in and... Um, yeah, there were mothers who did some of the painting, weren't they? Yeah, yeah. And a lot of the fathers helped hang up the flags. It was t truly a community, um, community project, wasn't it? Yeah. We dipped the flags into a water-based ink, so that really brightened them up. We strung up a line that we hang, hung them all up onto. It looked beautiful, and the wind caught them, and the kids really loved it. And they thought, um, it was so beautiful, but they thought that we were going to take them away with us when we left, which is a little bit sad because it just showed how little they had and how little they expected of us to, um, to leave them with anything. We were surprised, weren't we, how well the children focused. Yes, and I wondered whether that was because they didn't actually have any distractions in their lives like so many other children. No TV and no... No mobile phones, <laughs> no internet, no gaming, no things. computer games. Yeah, so they actually were able to sit with those projects for quite a long time, happily. 
and they really understood and enjoyed the clowning, which sort of makes me think how universal, especially the clowning. I think, uh, it's something that they will never forget for the rest of their lives. And we had a great day and they had big smiles on their face and I'm very grateful to the two of you for doing that.